Hey everybody, welcome to Ontario Gardening. So today I am going to talk to you about 10 different variations of ingredients that you can add to your sourdough starter that takes it to the next level, gives it a different flavor. They're pretty simple ingredients. The only thing I need to tell you is when you're adding ingredients to your sourdough, when it comes to things like herbs and spices, you want to put those inside of the dough when you first make your dough. So as you're doing its initial ingredients and pouring everything into a bowl or to your mixer, you want to add them in. Um, that's no problem, they're herbs and spices. When it comes to things like, for example, um, I'm going to give you a jalapeno cheddar. When you're adding the cheddar, you're going to probably want to add that into your last folds and stretches. So if you make sourdough, you already know um, you have a set of folds and stretches that you do with that dough. You're going to want to do it in the last set. So it's okay to add, um, so if it's jalapeno and cheddar, you could add your jalapeno and let it sit there and do a bulk fermentation. But your bulk fermentation usually takes between 10 and 12 hours so you really don't want to have like a cheese sitting on there in the on your kitchen counter for 12 hours that's that's a pretty long time it's an extended period of time that you don't really want cheese sitting on your counter for me personally if you want to and you feel comfortable doing that awesome i really have to watch um with certain medications that i'm on about not contracting foodborne foodborne illness so I don't want my cheese sitting on the counter for 12 hours personally. Up to you, but I just wanted to let you know, like I said, when I'm going through these different combinations, keep in mind you're going to want to add your herbs and spices when you do the initial mixing because then you're mixing all those herbs and spices in there and when you're adding things like cheese and tomatoes and things that you don't necessarily want sitting on the counter for a long period of time, you will add that in your last fold and stretch hope that makes sense. If you are an avid sourdough bread maker, you know what I'm talking about. So 10 different combinations. Here we go. The first one is Italian herb and cheese. I do have a little cheat sheet down here to actually give you the full ingredients. I am going to type these down in the um, description box so you can go back, but I'm just going to run through them in the video so that you have an idea. So Italian herb and cheese. So that is when you go to Subway, if you've ever been to Subway and you get that Italian herb and cheese bread, it tastes just like that. It is so good. So it is a tablespoon of basil, a tablespoon of oregano, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, and half a cup of parm. So you put all those herbs, just for an example, you would put all those herbs in as you're initially mixing that bread and then the Parmesan in your last folds and stretches as you're really getting it in there and then leaving it for the rest. Your next idea, number two, is jalapeno, cheddar, and chive. If you don't like chive, just do jalapeno and cheddar. And that is simply a third a cup of chopped jalapenos. That is up to you whether you wanted to leave them as rings or if you wanted to do um, like actual chopped jalapeno, totally up to you. But you're doing a third a cup of those, one cup of cheddar. So you can do shredded cheddar or you can do little cubes of cheddar. I personally like to bite into a cube of cheddar cheese as I'm eating my bread or my sandwich. So I do the cubes of cheddar, totally do um, the shredded. That would be great too. Um, and then you're going to do three tablespoons of chive. So totally up to you if you want to do the chive or not. I typically skip that. Um, and I just wanted to, before I forget, because I will, um, a couple, some of these recipes I have totally come up with myself um, through trial and error, making my own breads. A couple of them I've played off of ideas from this. This is backwards for you guys, I believe, as I am shooting it. But it is called Artisan Sourdough, made simple, and it is by Emily Rafa. I can link this down in the description box, but this gives you a ton of different ideas. I've talked about this book before. It gives you not only just sourdough bread ideas, but different like recipes that you can make with your sourdough starter. Moving on though. Number three, um, we've got the jalapeno. So number three is tomato, mozzarella, and basil. This one is 
delicious for sandwiches. If you're making like a turkey sandwich to have the mozzarella and the basil and the tomato inside, it's so good, especially if you garden and you can get that basil and the tomato right out of the garden, it is next level. But you're looking for a half a cup of chopped tomatoes, a half a cup of mozzarella cheese, again, whether you do cubed or shredded, that's up to you, and three tablespoons of that chopped fresh basil. So delicious. If you just if you don't have fresh basil, no problems. You can use the um, powdered basil and you're looking for two tablespoons of that as opposed to the three tablespoons of fresh. Number four, cinnamon, raisin and brown sugar. So this is going to be like your typical, am I crooked this whole time? Cool. This is going to be like your typical um, cinnamon raisin bread that you would buy from the store, but it's going to be in a sourdough version. And for that, you're going to want um, two tablespoons of cinnamon, a third cup of raisins, and a fourth a cup of brown sugar. So with this one, because it's raisins, cinnamon, and your sugar, you can mix that all as you're making the dough, no problems. And if you want to, um, this is a trick that bakers use when they're making like breads and puddings and stuff with their um, cinnamon or sorry, their raisins. You can soak your raisins for a half an hour on the counter. Nope, just cover them up in water and it'll plump up. So that's just a trick. If you're cool with dry raisins, I'm cool with dry raisins. Just throw your raisins right in there. Number five is cranberry and orange. So this is great for the holidays especially. And it is simply, you can buy the dried cranberry similar to a raisin at the store if you know how to make your own cranberry, awesome. But if you're just looking for a quick fix, you buy your cranberries that look like the raisins at the store. You're gonna look for a cup of cranberry and then you're going to look for a quarter cup of shaved cinnamon, or sorry, shaved orange. So if you are doing um, like fresh oranges, the zest from it. So you can also add to this recipe, it is optional, a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. That really does take this recipe to the next level. It's not necessary, but it really, it really brings out the flavor of that cranberry and that orange. It balances very, very well. Most people have sugar and um, vanilla already in their cupboard. So if you have them, add the teaspoon of each. It really does take it to the next level. Number six is chocolate chip sourdough. And honestly, it's just as simple as adding a cup of your semi-sweet chocolate chips. Um, there's nothing more. If you wanted to, you could play around with that. You could add sugars, you could add vanillas, you can add whatever you want. But if you're looking for a quick and simple, one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, boom, you're done. Number seven, dill and white cheddar. This one is delicious. If you've ever had um, I don't know if Americans get it, but it is here in Canada. It's called smart food popcorn. It's basically white cheddar popcorn. This one tastes so similar. It's really, really good, but with a dill flavor. So you are going to, for that, do two, sorry, three tablespoons of dill and one cup of white cheddar cheese. And that one, I would definitely shred. So you're gonna shred that cheese up, add your dill, mix that all around, and you do the dill, obviously, when you're doing the dough, mix the mozzarella in later. It is really, really good. You can also, if you have, um, it kind of changes the flavor a little bit, but if you have the white cheddar popcorn shaker, not everybody has access to that, but if you have that, put like a teaspoon to two teaspoons of that in there for, and it really amps up that white cheddar flavor. It makes it almost taste like that popcorn-y taste. It's really, really good. I just, I suggest it if you have the option to do that. Next one is a Greek bread. It is feta, tomatoes, olives, and Spanish onions. I know that sounds like a lot, but if you ever made focaccia, like a Greek focaccia bread or Mediterranean anything, you know that onions and feta and olives they, and tomato, they all go together. So you're looking for a cup of feta, half a cup of tomatoes, a half a cup of sliced olives, I suggest doing the black olives, and a quarter cup of that cooked onion. You can put raw onion 
in there. My experience with that in the past is one, because it's a cut raw onion, it's very susceptible to mold and bacteria quicker than a cooked onion would be. And two, when you're when you're eating a sandwich unless you like raw onion and you're cool with having raw onion like on a sandwich or on your burger or whatever it's really hard to digest that raw onion so i just like to do it quick pan with some olive oil fry it up just a little bit spanish onions don't really cook that well you can use a regular onion if that's all you have who cares but if you are doing the spanish onion for that authentic greek taste um, yeah, it's not the best if it's raw, just cook it up a little bit. And the next one, we've got two more. The next one is garlic and rosemary. So this one, you are going to take a big head of garlic. You're going to chop it about a third of the way down, roast it drizzled with olive oil for about 400 in your oven for about 45 minutes. So that's, you can leave the skin on. It's no problem. If you've ever seen it in like cooking videos, or if you've ever done it yourself, you take that head of the garlic, you cut off the top, put it in a roasting pan, drizzle it with all the olive oil, cook it at 400 for 45 minutes. After it's done, it becomes mushy. You put that entire head inside of this loaf. I know it sounds like a lot, but it really is not. You put that entire um, head of that garlic inside and you're doing that with two teaspoons of rosemary. And it is phenomenal, that bread. That's one of the best ones on the whole list, surprisingly. I love garlic. If you're a garlic lover, that is an absolute must try. And last one on the list is a sun-dried tomato and pesto. Sun-dried tomato, not for everybody, but if it's for you and if pesto is for you, you're looking for a third cup of, of the sun-dried tomatoes and you're gonna wanna chop those up nice, up and nice and you're looking for two tablespoons of pesto. And that's up to you whether you use a basil-based pesto or a pepper-based pesto, completely up to you with whatever your preference is. But that is 10, now that I have rambled on for 10 minutes, that is 10 different sourdough additions that you can add to your bread that just takes them to the next level. I think, of all of them, not that it matters. My favorite though is probably, I'm gonna say the jalapeno and cheddar. I really, really like that one. It brings, I like spicy. If you don't like spicy, you could substitute for like a banana pepper or a sweet pepper. But if you like spicy, I'm telling you, between the jalapeno and the cheddar, and it just brings that spice to you and like that kick to your sandwich, it's, it's really, really nice. But anyways, that's my thoughts on the subject. That is 10 additions that you can add to your sourdough. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic winter and your 2024 is everything you have hoped. Watch soon. In March, I am going to do a seed giveaway. Um, and yeah, we're just getting through this winter. My seeds are behind me. We are so close to starting seeds. Follow me soon and we will uh, get that going. We will talk to you soon. Bye.